Right now we don't have regenerative braking and the braking itself is, and we have just died. We just died. And it won't go into park. Yep, that's me. You're probably wondering how I ended up in this situation. For over a decade now, I have been following the progress of Aptera, a company that wants to make your next vehicle as efficient, as aerodynamic as possible. I am here in San Diego, where I am just about to get a chance to not ride in, but drive Aptera's latest prototype, Gamma. The vehicle behind me is nowhere near production ready. It went alpha, it went beta. Beta was the one without any doors and very little creature comforts, and then gamma. Now, there's a whole number of different things that are gonna change between the final production vehicle and what I'm gonna experience today, but come along with me for the ride. After years, I am finally driving the Aptera and this is the one that was revealed last year at Fully Charged Live in San Diego. I've ridden in two different Apteras to this point. I've ridden in the Alpha prototype and I've also ridden in the Beta prototype. But this is the first time I've actually had a chance to drive it. And there are some things about this vehicle that are still very much in pre-production state. For example, the motor cooling, you have to turn that on manually. The parking brake. Right now, there's a switch under the dash that you have to manually activate, and obviously that will change in the future as well. But then you also have some other things that are going to change over time. The infotainment system, that's going to be different. It's going to have more bells and whistles right now. It's just representative of what the final vehicle is going to be like. The center console area, that is also going to change before this vehicle hits production status. And the location of the rear view cameras, that's also going to change. It's going to be lifted slightly higher so you can actually see more of the road and you can see more of the monitors. And that's my first kind of major niggle with this vehicle, is it takes some getting used to where the rear view mirrors are. So in a conventional vehicle, you look there, you look there for your mirrors. In this vehicle, you have to look directly in front of the steering wheel or rather the steering yoke, if you want to know what's on either side. I'm slowly getting used to it, but I'm still finding myself looking for the mirror on each side of the vehicle. The rear view camera right up here is lovely. It's, it's very clear and very easy to see. Like any rear view camera arrangement though, you do have to change your focal length to look at it and that can get a little bit tiring if you are not used to it. The suspension on this vehicle is just about production status, so I've been told. And at the moment it does feel a little bit on the firm side, but it's worth noting here, driving around this residential area, first of all, the roads are not the smoothest. And second of all, there's no sound deadening in this vehicle. So none of the sound insulation that you'll see in the production vehicle has been installed. So the resulting finished feel of this vehicle, I'm told, is going to be a lot quieter. Another thing that Aptera has told me is that the turning radius of this pre-production prototype is about one half of what the 
production vehicle's turning radius will be. I've never been a fan of the yoke per se, but in this vehicle, I feel it, it does make sense because of those monitors up in front. Would I like a proper steering wheel? You bet, because I do like to hold my steering wheel a little bit higher than this yoke makes possible. Of course, the buttons on the uh, wheel here, they don't do anything yet either. All of those things are going to be changed when you hit nearer to production intent. After a while, you know, you do get used to these side view cameras, but I do think ultimately that I would prefer to move the monitors into a different location. Right now we don't have regenerative braking and the braking itself is, and we have just died. We just died. <clears throat> I have to apologize. A severe tactical error on my part had me taking out two very nice investors from New York on a pretty vicious test ride before you got into the Aptera. And apparently I did not initiate the startup sequence as I was supposed to, which turns on the fan and the cooling and uh, Matt and Quincy and Sarah have chastised me and I'll have to take a beating later. But we really did drive the piss out of this vehicle before you came because we knew you wanted to drive the piss out of the vehicle. And we thought, well, you know, three days of driving would be plenty to let you have a glorious test ride in, in the Gamma Aptera. But unfortunately, they threw me into the mix <laughs> and now I, I killed your test drive. As promised by Aptera CEO Chris Anthony, now that Aptera Gamma has had a chance to cool its inverter and motor down to the temperature that is considered normal for the vehicle. It's like driving a completely different vehicle and the grin that I have from ear to ear should probably explain that this, honestly, if you had told me that this vehicle was the one I drove earlier on, I wouldn't believe you. But I saw this being driven in I saw them cool down the overheating components and let it sit for a while. And now I'm really excited. This is engineering in action. This is a good demonstration of why a lot of car companies don't let journalists drive prototypes because things can and will go wrong. And you know what, right now, this feels so much different. The suspension is pretty good. It's a little loose here and there, and there's a few things with the steering wheel, a little adjustment that I would like to see. But the way that this drives, honestly, it doesn't feel like I'm driving a three-wheeler. It doesn't feel like a tadpole. It feels like a proper growed up car. The other thing worthy of note here is that this vehicle does not feel like a wide vehicle. It drives incredibly well. And you know what? The noise the motor makes is pretty addictive. This vehicle has no insulation, no soundproofing. It is a pre-production vehicle. That is not something that they are going to worry about at pre-production phase. But you know, I hope that they keep the noise of the motors because having three motors whine at you is so addictive and you know that is a great feeling. Aptera hasn't given me official 0 to 60 times for this vehicle and that's fair it's a pre-production and things will change between now and when this vehicle finally starts rolling off the production line but I'm very pleased to know that everything thus far will give you a reasonable acceleration, even from a very small squeeze of the go pedal. The other thing worthy of note here is that for a pre-production vehicle, the traction control is very well behaved. I've driven vehicles that are far further along the production process, and they haven't behaved as well as this has. 
Disclaimer time, I am a reservation holder for Aptera and I personally wanted to own one because the company supports right to repair. They want to give customers the ability to fix their own Apteras when things need attention. And it's also a solar electric vehicle and it's designed to be super aerodynamic. Aptera is promising efficiencies in the order of 10 miles per kilowatt hour, which frankly is hard to believe. But I believe very wholeheartedly, based on my experience today, that Aptera is going to be pretty close to that at the end of the day. When I complained about the monitors earlier, I talked to some of the Aptera team and they said, oh yeah, well, you'll get used to it pretty quickly. And I kind of balked at that as a suggestion. I'd just taken this vehicle out for the first time and I'd had a bad experience and I wasn't really super convinced. But now this vehicle is behaving as it should, I'm actually having a far happier time of it. I'm actually enjoying the experience. And also the monitors, Aptera's right. You do get used to it pretty quickly, but I still would like some better side view mirrors. Before I finish my time with Aptera Gamma, let's talk about some of the things that do need to be noted. First, the blind spots. This is a pretty big blind spot on the A pillar. And then you have another one here as well that takes some getting used to. Apparently that's going to be less in the production version. I think given time, that would be pretty easy to deal with. The other thing that I want to note is there's an inordinate amount of leg room. I can't actually reach my left foot all the way forwards. It's really cool. What is it? Sorry? What is it? It's an Aptera. Aptera? Yeah. Holy this, I saw one of these on YouTube. This is a pre-production. Pre-production? They're based locally. Oh, sweet. And this is their Gamma prototype. Oh, wonderful. Are you doing a review? I'm something? filming something, yeah. Sick. Yeah. <laughs> Take care. One thing that's worthy of note is that this vehicle very much grabs attention wherever it goes. And it's something that I guess you have to get used to. I love the fact that, that, that this gives everybody a smile. The, the biker who stopped and asked questions just now, big smile on his face. People are always asking, what is it? Where can I get it? How do I get one? And I think that says a lot about Aptera's dream. It's a car that is unique and quirky. I think it's always going to be a niche market vehicle, but at the same time, boy, is it fun. Finally, let's talk about the fact that even though this doesn't have any functional air conditioning yet, again, pre-production vehicle, is the fact that even with the windows open, it's reasonably quiet inside the vehicle. It reminds you just how aerodynamic Aptera Gamma is, how well it cuts through the air. And you know what? I cannot wait to test drive the production intent vehicle, which Aptera, I hope, will let me do. So there you have it. I've had a chance to drive the Aptera Gamma prototype. When I first got behind the wheel, I was worried about this vehicle's future. That turned out to be just a pebcac problem. Uh, uh, somebody forgetting to do something that needs to happen to a prototype vehicle in order to get it to behave normally and behave as expected. After that issue was dealt with though, this drives extremely competently. Sure, there's some fit and finish things here and there, but this is a pre-production vehicle. It's not a production intent vehicle. And if the final version is going to build on this, then I'm actually really excited.